In a previous video, we looked at how we're going to be deploying the OpenStack control plane on, on OpenShift as native Kubernetes objects. But we're going to be deploying the data plane still in a similar way to how we did it with Triple O. So in this video, I'll have a quick look over how the data plane is deployed, what that entails, what the various steps are, and I'll show some examples of how you can configure those compute nodes. So firstly, swap over to terminal here. So we do OC get PO in the OpenStack namespace. You can see we have a whole bunch of these operators here now. Um, so all the controller managers are, are the operators. It's the heat one that we've looked at previously. And then they are responsible for deploying the various objects. Like we've got Nova API, we've got Memcache, MariaDB, etc. All the things you're used to seeing in an OpenStack deployment. But then when it comes to managing the data plane, we're going to be doing that using the data plane operator. And in this case, I've disabled it. So if we do OC get CSV, we can see that the various operators are installed like so. And we've got one here for data plane. And in this, I've just set replicas to zero because I'm doing some work on this at the moment. So I want to run it locally, which is what this is here. This is the operator running locally. I don't want it to run in the cluster because I can't make changes to that easily. You, you would need to build the image, push the image, change the image in the CSV. It's easier just to disable it and run it locally. So once the data plane operator is running, it's responsible for doing everything that is required to actually deploy your, your compute node. So in this case, I've just got a CentOS Stream 9 VM here. So, so CentOS Stream 9, because it's basically real. Stir up some controversy on the internet. Um, so yeah, we're going to be configuring that. You can see that I've got some containers here because I'm, I'm testing some things at the moment. So what happens is we create this object called an OpenStack data plane. And in this, it contains all the information about the nodes we're going to be configuring. So this is a dictionary of nodes. In this case, I only have the one. And I'm passing it into my IP addresses I want to use there. That's the Ansible host IP address. So when you SSH to it, that's the IP we're connecting to. Um, I'm setting some environment variables for the role. So the role will um, apply to any of the nodes that are created as part of that role. So in this case, I'm setting just some Ansible debug information so that when I go and tail these jobs, like if I follow this running, oh, do I have a running job? Let's see if I have a running job. I don't, but if you do something like OC logs, then we can see that's the Ansible output and I'm getting all the debug info because I've set that environment variable to Ansible with velocity 4. In this case, pre-provision, because I don't want to use the bare metal operator to provision it for me. I've already done all of the, the pre-provision work. And then we have a node template. And now this is all the things that will apply to nodes in this role. And in this case, the role is EDPM compute. So we have a network config template, and this is just a Ginger 2 formatted um, network config template, just like we've we've always done in Triple O. So we're just providing it here now. So I'm doing all of my network setup like I would from my traditional Triple O labs. Uh, this is just a VM running in um, Fedora Server. I'll bring it over. So we're connected with Cockpit. It's just this VM here. So a bit of virtual machines. We say we've got the OpenShift environment, which is OKD. And then we have the CentOS test, which is the, um, the VM that we're provisioning. Okay, so then we've got a bunch of Ansible variables, and these are things that you would have traditionally provided via Triple O heat templates. Now we're just providing them directly via Ansible variables, and these are all from the EDPM Ansible project, and I'll link all these projects below so you can go and read the code and, and see you know, what we're working on as we work on it. So we're configuring role networks, for example. Um, oh, these are all similar things to what we had in Triple O. They're just direct Ansible variables. Um, name server, which is my pfSense router. And then if we want to set specific versions of containers, we can do that as well using, using variables. So once we've got that, then what we do is just OC apply that data plane node object, and that already exists for me, so nothing really changes. And then we can go 
OSDP node, and we can see that I have a node with deployment in progress. We can see that I have the OpenStack data plane object, and that is just what we have created. So that's all the information that I just showed you in that YAML file. Uh, the other thing to note is we're pushing the SSH key into a Kubernetes secret as well. So we mount that into the containers. So let's delete the object. So we'll do delete f data plane node. So now that's deleted. So we got OC get OSDP. We don't have anything. Don't have anything there. Don't have anything there. The other thing that it creates once it's it's finished doing things is it reaches out to the Nova operator and it creates a Nova, Nova external compute object. So we go OC get Nova external compute. We want to make sure there's no objects there either. Okay, so once it's deleted, we'll do OC apply. Actually, we'll remove the debug. So we'll change this back to one for now. OC apply dash F on our data plane node object. And we'll see here that the operator will start to kick off and it will start to do things now. So we can see we've got a couple of pods that are being created here now, the data plane deployment configure network. So if we follow the logs on this one, we can see that that's going and creating, uh, doing all the network config now for us. We OC get POL app equals open stack ansible EE. We can see those pods. We OC get OSDP node. We can see that configure network service is not yet ready. So this is the configure network service that is being executed at the moment. We can see that there. Once that's finished, it will start a new job and this will be updated accordingly until we reach the point where we need to create the Nova external compute object. And then the Nova operator will take over and it will do everything it needs to do to configure Nova specifically. So there's no object there just yet. So we have a look in here. Right, external compute. We have a look at how this code actually works. We can see there's a deployment file here, and this deploys the Nova external compute object. So it just creates a Nova v1 beta 1, which is coming from the Nova operator, Nova external compute, and it creates it with all the information, and it creates it with all the information from our OpenStack data plane node object and then Nova will go and configure things according to what we've defined here. So we can see that this all just comes from template cell name, template Nova instance, template custom service name. Uh, so it takes it from the uh, Nova template section. So we can see here that all this template stuff is coming from the data plane V1 beta one Nova template. So we go to that definition. We can see there it has a few things like custom service config. If you wanted to customize the Nova.conf, that's how you would do. So um, deploy, you can set that to false and it, it won't make any changes to the node. And then we've got a cell name. So if you want it to be cell one, cell two, whatever it might be in, in terms of Nova cells. So if we look at where that actually is in the Nova, in the data plane template, Nova template, we can see here we have a Nova section and that is the Nova template. So we go back to our data plane object we have node template and then a Nova section. So all that stuff would need to be here. If I wanted to change things, then I could do something like this, custom service config, and then I could customize my, my Nova service specifically. Um, so we can see here, like this would be the node template section, so node section, and then it has a Nova specific key under the Nova heading. That is where we can configure Nova specific things, not just under the, the node template section. It, do, it doesn't care about any of this stuff, for example. Okay, so we can see they're completed now. So we do OC get OSDP node. So now we're validating the network. And we can see that we have launched two more pods that are called validate network now. So we follow along with these.
pretty quick. Looks like it's validated the network. OC get OSDP node. So now we're doing install OS. So we check our pods again. We can see that we've got the install OS ones. So these are just configuring the operating system with packages and things that it needs to do its job. Remember, we need to do all this before Nova's actually going to work. So we need to configure the operating system and all the networking and everything that needs to happen. And then finally, we'll call out to Nova and say, hey, this node is ready. Go and configure it with Nova for us so that we can start running our virtual machines on this node. So we're configuring Open vSwitch, installing packages, doing all the OS type things that need to happen. So on the compute node, we've still got the logs in the same place that you would have expected to find them. var log containers nova. And we have the config under var lib open stack this time, config nova. And then we can see here we have, for example, the nova.conf with you know debug and we set all the transport URLs, etc. etc. We have a similar amount of containers to what you might expect on a normal um, compute node. We've got OVN controller, iSCSId for storage, node compute, and the various libvert containers that run. So everything from the compute perspective is very similar to what you would expect in Triple O. The only difference is how we actually um, handle all that deployment. So we have a data plane operator, which has three sets of objects. There's actually pretty good documentation on the data plane operator that I'll link below. We have three sets of objects that you'll interact with, which is the OpenStack data plane, OpenStack data plane node, OpenStack data plane role. They're the three main ones that you'll interact with. We also have services. So if you were looking to integrate with this solution, you can create your own service with your own playbooks and make sure that it's executed during the deployment. So once you've created those OpenStack data plane objects, um, it will start the deployment. It will start reconciling that controller, which happens um, through the data plane operator, and then it creates, for example, an Ansible EE object, so Ansible execution object, and that goes and creates the pods that actually execute the Ansible. So we go OC so get stack Ansible EE. We can see here that we have all of these jobs that are running. So this, this will go and actually create jobs within Kubernetes, which we can see here. Those jobs result in pods that are just executing Ansible. So these are the, the actual source of truth though once the jobs disappear. We'll get to see whether they're complete or they're still running. In this case, we're configuring the OS. So we've done configure network, validate network, install OS, configure OS, and we're making our way towards being able to um, do that Nova deployment. You can see where it's up to here. And if you want to get any information about a running job, you can OC logs dash F, and you can see exactly where it's up to. And at the moment, it's still still heavily a work in progress. For example, I'm working on a mechanism at the moment to make sure we don't erroneously run redeployments after you've deployed your data plane. So we don't want the controller to reconcile and then go and run a new deployment like when you don't expect it. So um, my plan at the moment is just to annotate the object. So once it's finished, we'll add an annotation. And if that annotation exists, then we, we won't execute any more. Um, so here, we won't execute any more deployments until you remove the annotation. Once the annotation is removed, will re-execute. So kind of reasserting state, you know, like if you think someone's gone in and changed something on your compute nodes, you can remove the annotation and we'll re-execute deployment to ensure that it's in the state we expect it is. But this is all still a work in progress. I'll link the PR that I'm working on for that down below. So after it's finished all of those data plane jobs, then we get to the point where we have the Nova external compute object. And we can see that there. YAML, and it has a bunch of statuses that are going to report on its current state. So deployment completed, true, deployment ready, true, uh, input data is true. So everything looks to be configured correctly at this point. And we can see there that um, the owner reference on this object is the OpenStack data plane node. So that's the controller that created this object. So I just want to make a really quick video because I haven't done an update in a while and just show how the um, data plane is being handled with the new implementation of OpenStack. It's really 
an exciting time for Red Hat Open Stack Platform. There's some pretty big architectural changes that I think will ultimately be a smoother experience. It makes it a bit easier for um, any user to start using this because it's all just native Kubernetes constructs. There's no triple heat templates. There's nothing that you need to know about heat. It all works in a way that you have come to know and expect from Kubernetes. So I think it will result in a better experience for everyone. Um, I'm keen to hear feedback. There was also a demonstration done at the Open Infra Summit in Vancouver just recently. I'll see if I can find that video. It might be um, uploaded in public now. But there was a full demo of basically what we've shown here, but with deploying the control plane, the data plane, and then creating VMs on it. So if you have any any feedback about you know what I've shown or what you've seen so far about this solution, anything you think would make it better, anything you would like to see, um, just any comments in general, happy to discuss them. I will put a bunch of links to the operators that I've talked about in this video below, well, along with the documentation and um, you know what we're working on. As with all of our products, we always work upstream first and then that becomes a productized solution. So you can follow along with our work on our, on our GitHub um, organization, which you can also find below. Thanks for watching. I'm keen to chat with you about the solution and I'm keen to provide further updates as we continue down this path of developing this solution.